It is only three weeks since it was first detected. Now Omicron is the dominant COVID variant in the capital overtaking Delta and it's spreading fast across the nation. While it's still not known how severe it is, it is clearly highly transmissible. And today another distressing record was broken. 78,610 people tested positive. Ten days before Christmas, Yet another sobering Downing Street briefing from the Prime Minister and his advisers. The doubling rate of Omicron in some regions is now down to less than two days. And I'm afraid we're also seeing the inevitable increase in hospitalizations up by 10% nationally week on week and up by almost a third in London. There was too a warning from the chief medical officer over socialising in the run up to Christmas. I do think people should prioritise what matters and that by definition means deprioritise other things and I think people are doing that and I, I think I would recommend that and I think most people would recommend that. I don't think you need a medical degree to realise that is a sensible thing to do with an incredibly infectious virus about which there are quite a lot of key things uh, we don't know. The data from South Africa is still incomplete and again Professor Witte advised against reading too much into claims that hospital rates are lower and the disease is milder. I, I'm afraid we have to be realistic that records will be broken a lot over the next few weeks as the rates continue to go up. Uh, if you look at the overall rates, uh, it looks as if Delta, which we've had with us for a while, is still flat and the growth is Omicron. So what we've got is two epidemics on top of one another. With Plan B now in force, care home guidance today changed to protect residents but also to allow them family time, a stark contrast to the closed doors last December. So from today, the residents can only have three named visitors each, plus one essential carer. And how's that going to be for them? Some of them will be OK. Um, those that have smaller families, not such extended families. We do have some residents that have, you know, quite large extended families and it could be quite difficult for them to decide which three of those they particularly want to see or even for the family to decide which three get the opportunity to come and see mum or dad and who doesn't. Even before we could go into the home, we had to take a lateral flow test. Mine was negative. And staff will now have to test three times a week, up from two, and take a PCR once a week. This is the protective arm wrapped around care homes. On Monday, NHS England wrote to hospitals saying discharge patients where you can, back into the community, into hospices and, of course, into care homes. But that brings up a lot of bad memories. That first wave where... COVID swept through care homes and it also causes another issue. Right now, the manager here told me that they get phone calls from relatives saying, you're not going to take those patients from hospital, are you? Because they want to protect their relatives. Oh. Oh dear. There's a form of post-traumatic stress. In the first wave, 40% of the registered COVID deaths in England between mid-March and mid-June were care home residents. It's not, they tell me here, something you can ever forget. They lost 12 of their residents and at one point 22 of their staff were off sick. Do you understand the need for the new regulations? I think it's really important that uh, we stick to the regulations and it makes it easier for everyone. Um, and they're very clear each and every time you phone up what it is that they're expecting of you. Um, and again, I, I quite like that, even though, of course, it, it might feel a little bit annoying. I like that because it makes it clear, because I like to stick to the rules too. The government itself is resisting further rule changes, placing a heavy reliance on the booster programme with a call today for more volunteers described by the Prime Minister as an emerging territorial army of the NHS and a race against time to get those jabs in arms and save lives. Well, just after the Prime Minister's news conference, I spoke to the government's former chief scientific advisor, Professor Sir Mark Walport. I asked him how threatening the Omicron variant actually is. It's an extraordinarily transmissible uh, virus. It's uh, doubling uh, less than every two days. Um, a record number of cases today, 79,000 nearly. Um, average daily cases up to nearly 60,000. So, you know, these are greater than the numbers we were measuring a year ago in the, the previous major wave. So, from a scientific perspective, 
regardless of plan B, which is now in place, is a plan C needed? And what might that be? What would be the most effective thing to do next? Well, the critical thing really is to get as many of the population immune as possible. And so the challenge really is to buy time to get the booster programme to really work. And it's highly impressive how many people the, the NHS is getting through, more than 600,000 today. But of course, the booster programme also doesn't work instantly. So it takes about a week to start to have an effect of the booster and probably two weeks for it to peak. And um, so the challenge really is to try and reduce the transmission during the period when we're getting boosted. That's, that's the key issue. But if you were chief scientific advisor in government now, what would you be saying to the prime minister about whether those measures you've outlined go far enough in those immediate next week or two? Well, I think it's perfectly clear from the demeanour of the Prime Minister and the Health Secretary that they are well aware of the potential consequences. And obviously the challenge is that hospital admissions are starting to go up, particularly in London, where uh, the Omicron variant is now the dominant variant. And of course, the challenge is that it's then, you know, it's a week from a case being identified to actually the risk of ending up in hospital, sometimes a bit longer. But only and a few so, days uh, ago, the Prime Minister was saying, you know, still go ahead and go to Christmas parties. Well, I mean, I think the, you know, the, 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 the scientific advice is that there is the risk of a very significant uh, wave of admission to hospital. It could be very difficult to stop it completely because this virus is so transmissible. Um, and even if it is a bit less serious than previous variants, and there's no doubt there is quite a lot of population immunity now, so we are in a much better place. But nevertheless, if you've got hundreds of thousands of cases, then you know a relatively small proportion getting sick can overwhelm the health service very quickly. So when... the dilemma for the policymaker is, you know, do we lock everyone down completely, which would be, you know, an extremely difficult policy decision to make with Christmas coming up, or do we do everything we can to get people to behave in a cautious way and do everything we can to slow the spread? So what where would you you've set out those two choices from a scientific perspective, where would you land on those? Well, you know, the science is very straightforward. The science is what is the virus going to do? And the virus will take every opportunity it can to jump from one person to another. So what the science basically says is if you want to stop the infection spreading, then you have to reduce as much social contact as you can. Um, but it's then a, a, a much more of a difficult policy decision, which is how you take everything else into account in deciding how much to restrict people's ability to socialise, given that Christmas last year was wrecked for everyone, and clearly uh, they don't want to repeat that. But, so the science um, is clear, lockdown as soon as possible, basically. Well, I, the, what the science says is if you want to slow the development, then you have to keep people apart. Um, it's then a question of how much, and that really is a policymaker's decision. It's not, you know, the science doesn't say what the policy is, the science just says what is happening with the infection. So, finally, given the sheer scale of the case numbers mm. in this wave, is there a greater risk than there was last winter of the NHS being overwhelmed, in your view? Well, I mean, the, I think it's very difficult to be very accurate about that. The London School has various different projections, depending on how people behave. Um, but there's certainly a risk of something that looks very similar, and it could be worse.